So we're here at this roller coaster and we're going to be mapping it with LiDAR today. Roller coasters. Woo! And look at that power. Let's go. It's going to be intense. So why are we here? We're here because this is an intricate structure, has so much detail, and it's just an amazing thing to scan and get a 3D model of. And look at all this intricate lattice work. There's so much complex geometry and so much wood intertwining with itself. It's just a massive mayhem over here. Now before any good scan, I mean, you gotta ride the ride. You gotta try it first. So we're about to jump on the ride, do the roller coaster, then we'll go set up the drone and start flying and capture this whole structure. Let's get going. All right, we're getting ready to do our first ride before the scan. We just finished riding that roller coaster. Now it's time to fly the drones. Today's the day. We're flying a roller coaster here at Six Flags. We're almost there to our takeoff and landing site. This is going to be epic. So we're setting up right now. We're just behind the roller coaster. Beautiful, clear, visual line of sight. It's going to be an epic data set. I bet you you're excited to see what this looks like too, but I can't even express. I've been dreaming of flying a roller coaster for years. And now here I am standing right behind this roller coaster capturing this in LiDAR with the drone. Pretty cool. Finally made it. We're standing right behind the roller coaster right now. We got our R2A LiDAR M300 drone. We're about to take off here in one second. Tell you what, dreams do come true. Flying a roller coaster today. This data is going to be insane. I couldn't be more excited right now to get this drone up in the air and start mapping that roller coaster right on the other side of this road. I just can't wait. Super excited. Let's get up in the air. After that whole roller coaster, mind blown. That was just beautiful footage and a be I can't wait to see the data. There was so much intricate detail. You know, that was my big curiosity is all these individual pieces of wood that make up that, that lattice structure. I mean, is this data gonna be able to see all of that? I don't know. Let's go back to the office though and find out, and process that data and show you. Let's go. Now, before I jump in and start showing you guys all the data, I wanna talk a little bit more about how I flew that mission and I have this case, it's an M600 case, um, temporary tabletop here. But the way I flew to capture the data, I ended up scrapping the whole mission plan. I just did this manual flight and I, I hugged the contours of the roller coaster. And before on, on previous generation LiDARs, like the data would just come out total garbage. So there's now two things I'm excited to see. Can I manual fly the whole LiDAR mission and then also all that intricate detail of the lattice work, is it gonna show up? So let's just jump right in and take a look at the, the, the data and that flight plan. Here it is, this is the first look at this LiDAR data and you can see the thick red line, that's, that's the trajectory I was telling you about where I just manually flew it. And you can see it kind of went all over the place, lots of overlap. Let's jump right in and we can, we can start to see really good coverage of the data. Oh yeah. That's looking awesome. All right, so this is just a verification of how the data looks like in the desktop software. Now I'm gonna upload the LAS, that's the file format for LiDAR data, to the Rock Cloud, and we're gonna start looking at it in there because it's much easier to analyze LiDAR data on the Rock Cloud, and also I can share that data with everyone. So you guys can all click below in the link in the description. You'll see a link to this data set, so you guys can go ahead and follow along with me too. 
let's go ahead and check out the data set over there. Look at that. Wow. That's super cool. Let's zoom in. Oh yeah, it captured all of that lattice work. What about inside? Can we look above and kind of get an angle? Whoa! It saw in between those, no way. All the way, you can see all the way down there to the bottom where it's green, that's, that's the bottom ground. And all the tracks, this, this is, this is cool. That's real cool. But wait, 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 we captured uh, color too. Elevation, change it to color. Dude, all right. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, that's cool. So that's that first drop there and it comes and goes underneath and through, through the coaster. Whoa. Whoa, no way. All the internal structure as well. How did it even, how did it do that? So this is, this is the LiDAR data. This is the colorized LiDAR data. And you guys are seeing this right here with me the first time. This is, this is cool. I can't, I flew this in 30 minutes and this is what came out. Okay. I think it's like, if you were going to do this with like a photogrammetry, I don't know how many photos would it take to go around each one of these pieces of the lattice, you know, cause like you have to get like every angle in order to resolve this stuff in the inside. So let's just, nope, oh, missed a spot over here. Shucks, got to go back for that spot. Well, this is just for fun. This is for you guys. Let's go back to the elevation view because I think this is, this is, you can really see that structure on the inside. Wow. <laughs> this is so cool. Here, we can actually go by GPS time if I click right here. And so this, if I zoom out a little bit, this is actually the GPS time. So this is like how I flew and captured it. You can actually see if I start scrolling this through, it'll kind of scrub through the data set how I was flying. So you can see multiple passes over the same area and all of that is lining up just, just perfectly. I mean, this is multiple passes over this area. And again, with LiDAR data, when you're changing a bunch of elevation and you know doing corners and curbs, usually that data just turns out complete garbage. So to see it lining up this well, it's this, that's, that's what's impressing me right now. That's cool. But also, it's also seeing inside of all of this structure and that, wait, let's, Hold on, hold on. Let's look at the return number. So this sensor has three returns and you can actually see, that's interesting. All right, so the red, that's the first return, first laser return coming back. And then you have green and blue. And I believe the, the blue is the last, re so it, the last return, it's going all the way down these corridors and seeing, seeing the earth underneath of underneath of the structure. So that's, that's why you need those multiple returns because sometimes the top of the structure will just, you know, it gets that laser pulse and bounces it right back and you want to be able to keep seeing a little bit further. Okay, that's impressive. Well, I think it worked. I think we captured ourselves a roller coaster. This is really cool. You guys, you should definitely take a look at this data set and just play around, just move it around in 3D and and let me know down in the comment section below like what you guys think about this data or what do you think, what are other possibilities you can do with something like this and where do you see a use case? I, I can see bridges, a lot of this, because this was, this was under 30 minutes of I was out there actually flying and I captured all of this intricate detail in just that short amount of time. I don't know, it just makes you, it makes you think. Well, I, I hope you guys like the video. I obviously love making these videos. I have a great time doing it. Check out the data on the Rock Cloud. I did use the Rock R2A LiDAR and I used the Rock Cloud for all of this data. Those are both our products that we've been working on to make this stuff easier and simpler. It's fun to see the possibilities. And with that, I'll see you guys next time here on Indiana Drones.